Hello and welcome to Learning with Lulu. So in this video we are going to be doing a guided poetry analysis um, and the poem today is Dear Basketball by Kobe Bryant. Um, this was one of my students favorite poems to um, dissect and so I thought it would be great to analyze it here. So. Per usual, I'm going to just give it a read through once and then on the second reading, we will break it down a little bit more. So, Dear Basketball, from the moment I started rolling my dad's tube socks and shooting imaginary game-winning shots in the great Western Forum, I knew one thing was real. I fell in love with you. I love so deep, I gave you my all from my mind and body to my spirit and soul. As a six-year-old boy deeply in love with you, I never saw the end of the tunnel. I only saw myself running out of one. And so I ran. I ran up and down every court after every loose ball for you. You asked for my hustle. I gave you my heart because it came with so much more. I played through the sweat and hurt, not because challenge called me, but because you called me. I did everything for you. Because that's what you do when someone makes you feel as alive as you made me feel. You gave a six-year-old boy his Laker dream, and I'll always love you for it, but I can't love you obsessively for much longer. This season is all I have left to give. My heart can take the pounding, my mind can handle the grind, but my body knows it's time to say goodbye. And that's okay. I'm ready to let you go. I want you to know now, so we both can savor every moment we have left together, the good and the bad. We have given each other all that we have. And we both know, no matter what I do next, I'll always be that kid with the rolled up socks, garbage can in the corner, uh, Zero five seconds on the clock. Ball in my hands. Five, four, three, two, one. Love you always, Kobe. So, just to start this off, um, with this poem, I almost feel like Kobe was inventing an entirely new genre of poetry, and that is the retirement poem. Um, and simultaneously, this poem is both public, but also very private. Um, it reads as like a one-on-one -on -one conversation between um, two very intimate uh, entities. So, um, going back to just the very first word, dear basketball. So, dear. Um, poetry it is an intimate art form. I mean, it requires effort to write and you put forth effort for what or who you love. Um, it shows a lot that he wrote essentially an ode to basketball. Um, it's not called an ode to basketball, but the fact that he's starting with this very um, personal addressing of basketball, it shows that this is an ode to it. He loves it. He has put forth effort um, and he's putting forth effort even just to write about it. Um, he could have just tweeted or made a post or released a news statement, but no, he wrote a poem. He wrote an ode to basketball. Um, and I would say that this isn't your standard. I had a great career. It'll be sad to leave. Thanks for everything. Um, it's an art form that makes it easier to talk about your feelings. So it's his way of really expressing how much basketball had meant to him. Um, <clears throat> and so dear basketball and then basketball, it's not necessarily a physical orange basketball itself that he's writing this to. It's the experience of the game. Um, so he says, from the moment I started rolling my dad's tube socks, um, think, think like uh, this bright white bleached cotton. Um, 
it's this blank slate and what can you do with a blank slate you can anything can be written on it any outcome any any story can be written on a blank slate and that's kind of the imagery I took for him from him specifically mentioning tube socks you know I picture this bright white bleached cotton um, and and it's almost this blank slate um, also socks in general are kind of gross uh, so that's that just kind of shows his willingness to to enjoy the experience of basketball no matter what his um, thing that he was throwing was and shooting imaginary imaginary um, before the first step on the road to success you have to imagine the road and he was already doing that game-winning shots in the great western forum um, and this is an allusion to where he played and the western tradition of like humanities I knew one thing was real and so that's kind of a juxtaposition to these imaginary things you know he's already imagining the road but there is something that's real and that was his that he fell in love with basketball um, a love so deep I gave you my all from my mind and body to my spirit and soul so a question I want to pose there is why have that distinction between all four of those between mind body spirit and soul um, and I want to propose that it's this kind of eternal beloved it's the de this devotion that one might give a an epitome of something or you could say a god um, yeah it's this devotion to that as a six-year-old boy deeply in love with you I never saw the end of the tunnel um, the tunnel is in, in this case he's referencing you have to run through a tunnel to get to the court um, I also want to point out that there's kind of this um, imagery connection between a rolled tube sock and a tunnel kind of same shape going on there um, but in just kind of the more universal symbolic sense a tunnel is usually a phrase to signify an unending endeavor so here and um, the next little bit it's it's a metaphor um, and questions that, concepts I want to pose here what is the endeavor for him and what does he want to accomplish is it just is it being an amazing basketball player or is it just saving the experience of basketball itself I only saw myself which is kind of the little key right there it's not for the fans or anyone else it's for himself um, running out of one again running out of that tunnel then we had and so i ran i ran up and down every court after every loose ball for you you asked for my hustle i gave you my heart we've got that alliteration there of hustle and heart because it gave because it came with so much more um in this stanza he's personifying basketball again it's not uh, the physical ball itself it's the epitome of it um, you know if there were just like the Greeks and Romans and Norse and um, all cultures um, came up with like archetypes for different things in the world um, and made them gods I feel like he's kind of uh, creating this personification this archetype of basketball so I played through the sweat and hurt, not because challenge called me, but because you called me. I did everything for you. Um, again, there's that ode essence to it, the O oh basketball, except it's in more modern language, so we're just saying you, but just kind of put like O oh basketball. Um, it glor it's glorifying this particular subject. And the one difference is it's not exactly lyrical, but it is a poem. And we've got the stanzas and lines and a lot of symbolism going on so because that's what you do when someone again this personification this deity of the experience of basketball um, just like in greek 
mythology, and all the others I mentioned. Alive as you've made me feel. Um, that alive, aliveness, um, you know, the, the gods give us life. You gave a six-year-old boy his Laker dream. So um, that's more referencing like hard and fast, he, what team he was on. Um, I do want to point out he brought it back to being a six-year-old boy. He, he kind of went away from that, but he brought it back to this cyclical, it's the, been this lifelong dance with basketball. And I'll always love you for it, but I can't love you obsessively much longer. So he admits, admits that it's been an obsession with it. Um, but he says much longer. And why not? Because he's retiring. That's why this is a retirement poem. This season is all I have left to give. Now, we can take season a couple different ways. It was either that, you know, basketball season, but also we all go through seasons of life. And, and the season of life that he was in right then, that was all he had left to give. Um, and then he says, my heart can take the pounding, my mind can handle the grind, but my body, so we've got the mind and the heart, they're, they're still there, but the body is aging and it's time to say goodbye. Um, and, and in a book I've been reading recently, it's been talking about how we mortals, we know how to love because we know how imperm impermanent things are. Um, and it says it's time to say goodbye. And so my question here is, was the experience beautiful because it had to come to an end? And then, and then we get the breakup stanza, or I, it's kind of the breakup-esque. And that's okay. I'm ready to let you go now. No, oh, I'm ready to let you go. I want you to know now. So we, so he went from saying you, 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 and you know, they were separate, but now it's this we, they're combined. So we both can savor every moment we have left together. They've become one entity, the good and the bad. We have given each other all that we have. And we both know no matter what I do next, I'll always be that kid. So despite his aging, despite his retirement, he'll still always be that kid. Um, and a question I have here is like, do the younger versions of ourselves still exist? And um, are they still who we are or do they die off as we age? That's just a concept to consider from this. With the rolled up socks, referencing those tube socks again, garbage can in the corner, five seconds on the clock. Um, again, that clock referencing time, it's inevitable. The aging, the retirement, it has to come to an end. The goodbye has to come. Ball in my hands. Five, four, three, two, one. Love you always. Um, and, and so that's kind of saying always, like before even he was just imagining any of it, um, it just had to be found. And then he says, Kobe. And he signs off with just first name only. Um, he doesn't include his last name. And so that just, that shows that level of intimacy, um, which you get definitely from the poem because, you know, in that stanza, two stanzas back, we get this essence that they have become one entity. Um, so it makes sense that he would sign off with just his first name to show that personal connection, that, that intimacy. Um, so yeah, for from this poem, you get the sense that basketball became this this muse for for him. Um, I I loved um, breaking down this poem, um, and I found it really beautiful and just like the respect of what things can we be passionate about in our own lives um, to this extent. And so I hope I hope you enjoyed this poetry analysis. And if you enjoyed it or benefited it from it, please make sure to comment down below, like the video, share with others you think might enjoy it. Um, and 
maybe gain some insight or comfort from it and um, yeah, help to have you come back around to this channel and subscribe so that you can not miss any upcoming content. Um, thanks for watching and I hope to see you back around. Bye.